Hello there and welcome back to what I'm going to call Mark and Tristan play because we're having another look at the K2SE run that I've not actually been playing with for a while. Uh, Mark and Tristan decided it would be fun to carry on working on the factory after we finished the game, after we uh, solved the Stargate puzzle and so on. And so I'm going to be reporting on what they've been getting up to. Last time I talked about how they've been working on setting up all of the Arco chests or Arcolink storage devices in order to teleport stuff around from planet to planet in order to improve and, and speed up all of the logistics we've got going on. But there have also been some more mundane things going on. So for example Tristan's been going around and upgrading all of the uh, all of the core mining stations on Norvis to be the single warehouse design like this. So we have one where the, the, uh, the core chunks come out of the mine, they go into a warehouse and then a train put and then there's one warehouse there, a train pulls in and it's loaded from all of them. These are quite slow belts but to be honest at the rate we get through core chunks that's probably fine and because we have so many trains. And the idea of doing stuff like this is to help save on the UPS front uh, but as you can see by the fact that my game seems to be running at about 22-23 UPS uh, a bit more effort might be required on that front if we want the game to actually run nicely. Other core mines have had similar things done to them. Uh, this one is actually running through red belts so that's even slower although the output has been upgraded all the way to purple so there's some, there is some quick bits feeding some very very slow bits but you know what it's probably fast enough as I say when a train pulls in here we don't mind if it has to wait a little while and core chunks don't exactly stack high so having slow belts loading up a train doesn't really matter. The amount of the time for doing getting everything done here is going to be massively dominated by the amount of time it takes the train to trundle all the way from up here down to the unloading area down here, and I need to turn the station names on because that's a mess, all the way down here in order to unload. Meanwhile, Tristan has also been upgrading the uh, copper processing, so now we've got lots of tier 3 modules in here. It uh, astounds me a little bit that we had uh, something worse than tier 3 in here before, but apparently that's what we're playing with. So we've got tier 3, we've got yellow belts coming through here, that's ridiculous. Tier 3 productivity modules, tier 3 speed modules. Uh, this is this is very, very old tech. This could do with a, another big upgrade, and he said that himself actually, that it, maybe at some point it should be upgraded to use the same style as the iron smeltery that Mark put in over here quite some time ago, back when I was actually playing with them. Uh, so we have this, this is the new, uh, this is the top of the range current uh, bleeding edge system. I said bleeding edge, I mean, it's, it's, it is to be fair, it is only on tier 6 modules over here, but that was what we could afford at the time. So we've got now, we've got tier 6 modules, got faster, faster, more advanced machines. The whole system runs a bit quicker. Okay, there's a lot of casting machines up here because that's the, le the, the limiting factor because of the speed of those. But the idea of this is that it's now, it's now nicely balanced for running with tier 6 modules. You, with tier 6 modules, you get a huge boost to the productivity. You can see over there we've got a plus 70% productivity boost on these uh, on these particular machines and a plus 56% boost on this one uh, and I think that's about it because you can't put productivity modules into these but we do have speed modules in them instead. So we're getting a nice uh, a nice good big buff onto the productivity out of the systems over here. So I think it's very, very worth it and it would be worth doing the upgrade for copper as well. And also probably potentially doing the same sort of upgrades with the stations as well because this is a very, very nice system. Now it's, this would be a little bit overkill for copper because I don't think we have, we don't have space outposts uh, producing um, uh, copper ore. We do have regular, we may have some regular mines left, I'm not sure. Uh, we definitely have core processing and not sure about byproducts. I suppose what comes the stuff that comes over from some of the other planets. Oh, that'd be the trash. So yes, we'd have quite a lot being dropped off here. But we wouldn't need the space outpost station at the top. We would need an acid. We would need pyroflux. I don't think we'd need woo uh, or coal because those are only required for smelt for making the the coke in order to make steel. So those wouldn't be required. Um, and we'd only want need one loading station at the bottom here. Oh, and a fueling station as well. So this design is very, very good, and it would be quite nice to upgrade the copper to the same sort of system, but it's probably not vital. I mean, I don't think we need the copper to be set up like this. We haven't been running into copper shortages as far as I'm aware. But, you know, better is always, well, better. On a similar sort of modulely upgradey type level, Mark has upgraded the uranium processing. So we've now got the uranium ore is coming in down here, as you as as, as you you can probably imagine. Uh, then it's being centrifuged over here, and these have now been taken up to tier six modules on both. So that's going to be again a bit more productive. We're now getting a nice 28% productivity boost there, and then it's passed over to these centrifuges, which are doing the Coverex process, and those are also running with a 28% product productivity boost. So we're getting a, a good extra healthy amount out of this. This is going to be sort of about probably about two thirds extra, something like that, when you multiply the two together. And then we've got all of the all of the good stuff beetling out over the side here. However, Tristan also did some modifications over here in order to make sure that we don't ever overload on the spicy uranium that's coming out of this process, because at the moment we've got well, when you when you centrifuge your your uranium, you get a number 
number of things out. As you can see over here, we're getting quite a lot of the dull, the dark green uranium. We're also getting some iron ore and some stone, which is fed off to their own stations to be taken away to be reprocessed. Where's that? Okay, down here. That's fine. But sometimes, if you're lucky, you get out little bits of um, hot uranium. This is what we refer to as spicy uranium. And at the moment, I actually can't see it. Oh, there's one. There's one. So you occasionally get some of the uranium-235 coming out as well, the, the exciting spicy stuff. And so you need to be able to do something with that. And so the idea is that it will flow down the belt over here and, and go down here and where it will be fed off and it will go into the station over here. And so previously we had this system jamming up because we would have so much of the spicy uranium coming in from the Kovarek system over here that there wouldn't be enough room for the spicy uranium from the centrifuges to be dealt with. And that I think at least once caused the whole system to jam up and, and, and stop working. And that's really unfortunate when it happens because if you can't get any more of the dull uranium through into here then you can't make any more of the spicy. But if the belts are already jammed up all the way around here then you can't, then you just can't unclog it and so it, it, the whole thing just jams up and, and breaks and so I believe what Tristan's done here is adding in he's, put, he's watching on this belt to see when there's as long as there's less than 20,000 in this warehouse if there's less than 20,000 then we'll allow this to flow if not then we're clearly not getting through all that much of the spicy stuff so we kind of we want it to stop and just let it let it trickle through on the other belt so we don't get the, so we don't get an overload now in theory we'll eventually get to the point where we've cooked enough of this uh, dull uranium through the Covarex process that all of these will jam up and all of these machines will stop working. And you can see it's starting to happen here, but there's still a bit more to be loaded all the way along here. And at that point, well then eventually we'll, that'll push back the dull uranium all the way back to here and this will stop running as well. And the whole processing system over here will go to sleep. And that's absolutely fine because I think if that happens, then we've clearly got enough uranium of both types. So we can just, we can just allow it to go to sleep and, that, and that'll be absolutely fine. Next up, we're moving into orbit, and we're going to take a look at some of the train systems up here as well for process of for passing the all of the ores and things around. Now, Tristan says that he's gone in and put in some prioritization or removing prioritization from the uh, from the downstream stations. So we've got a load of downstream top stations across here, and he says that he's changed the stations to balance the trains between them rather than having them tending to prioritize one of them. I'm not quite sure what he's done there because I had a bit of a look at them, and it doesn't seem things don't seem to have changed in in any way that I can see. Now we've got a train limit being set here. If the tick, if there is, if there's more than zero ticks, and that tick is being set over here by looking at the number, the total number of things in this warehouse, just absolutely everything, outputting that as an eye, and if there's more than five thousand on that, then outputting a tick that goes straight into here, and there don't seem to be any other cables going into the. Oh, actually, I take that back. There is another, there is another cable going up off into the distance, going up to here. Right, so here we've got another one feeding in, and this is looking at an input signal. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what he's doing here. This is so. This is this seems to be feeding, taking the the amount of stuff in this warehouse out, feeding it onto the onto the belt system over here, and passing it through here. Now, possibly, possibly this is what turns on the emergency additional trains over here. So there, we have some emergency downstream stations with extra trains in them, and so if the if the system fills up too much, then it'll dispatch one of these trains. And yeah, you see they're leaving if D is greater than 1. And over here we're increasing D if there's too much stuff in the station. So, but I think that was a system that was already there. Because I remember Tristan building an emergency downstream stations uh, system uh, ages and ages ago. Back when we were actually playing this. So I'm not quite sure what he's done. But I'm sure he'll tell me in the comments. Because I, uh, I, I can't find it, I'm afraid. And now, moving away from Norvis, we're going to take a quick look at Big Red. And Mark says he's added in some additional uh, mineral water mines. So maybe, yeah, there's one down here. You see mineral water is being pulled up here, fed into, I'm assuming there's some massive, yes, there we go, here's some ducts. The ducts are ducting it all the way back along here, back into the factory. And so, essentially, the uh, we've been making so much Vitamalange and Vitamalange products that we've managed to get through all of the uh, all of the mineral water that was being dug up before. And the mineral water is very, very important. Ah, oh, here we go, yes. So the mineral water is being brought in and turned into fertilizer fertilizer in order to make the Vita Blooms. And that's that's a good thing. I mean we need we need the Vita Blooms in order to make absolutely everything else. But but the fertilizer is a bit of a sort of a a bottleneck isn't quite the right word, word to use it, it because it, it runs absolutely fine. We've got a load of stuff over here making bio creep, bio matter, uh, passing it down here to be mixed with the mineral water to, and the uh, and nitric acid, yes, nitric acid, and some sand as well to be made into the fertilizer. So I mean that that works, 
but Marcus said that he would like to start bringing the fertilizer in rem from remotely through the usual Arca chest system. And if we look over here, you can see that yes, here we here we have the Arca system that's bringing all of the stuff in. At the moment, it's trying to well, it might sometimes bring mineral water in, but not in particularly large quantities by the look of it. So what Mark would like to do is start bringing fertilizer in through this as well, and then feeding it from here over to everything that needs it. I feel like that might be quite a big job, but then probably no bigger a job than going around and en endlessly digging up more and more mineral water from around the planet. So I think it, make, it makes sense to be starting to bring stuff in from remotely. Uh, because we've got this general push that we want to try and start producing everything uh, from core mining, whether that's core mining on Norvis or core mining on other planets, we want we don't want the factory to need any more babysitting than we have to give it, and so it would be nice if everything just runs from the infinite core mines. Uh, whether that's going to be practical, well, I, I would say we'll see, but I don't know how much more is going to be done on this game before Factorio 2 comes out, or maybe before another release of Space Exploration comes out, and makes it all somewhat moot. Carrying on further out into the solar system, we get to Kothar! And both of them have been busy out here. So Tristan has noted that they, they, they'd run out of stone for the hydrogen chloride. And so he's put in an additional supply of it. That may have been more mines. It might be more belts bringing it over. I'm not certain. But this belt seems to go on forever. I'm assuming there's a mine on the end of this. Where does this even go? Who, who builds like this, honestly? All right, here we go. Here's a stone mine over here with uh, with a nice healthy four and a half million in it, bringing it down a ridiculously long belt. I, I want to blame Mark for this, but I think it, but it might actually have been Tristan. Uh, who knows? It's, it's kind of hard to tell because they've played quite a lot more since I, uh, since I last looked at it. Tristan says he's also prioritised pulling all of the, uh, the the stone out of core processing in order to make sure that, that gets used up so that the, uh, the core mines on this planet will last for as long as possible. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but he thinks in the in the long term he's, we're probably going to have to start shipping stone out as well uh, because it just uses so much in order to make all of that hydrogen chloride as we saw. Oh, and he's added a couple of new stone mines. So that's probably what I was looking at. Uh, Mark, on the other hand, has been out here and he has been doing things too. So he has expanded the RoboPort network like that, which is uh, ridiculous, but, you know, is, is kind of worthwhile because that means he's now been able to get out and get to all of the core seams on this planet. So presumably there's one, yes, there's one all the way up here. So now we have a red, a red belt that goes from here all the way back down and into the factory, picking up from a few more mines on the way. So when you get to down here, yes, we've got a slightly fuller red belt and goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. <laughs> and eventually down here, we actually start to get a decent amount on this belt so it's been upgraded to a green and then to a purple belt and all of this is flowing and flowing and flowing into oh in all into this this one particular station this one very lucky station here uh, allowing it to then be brought by train because that's still quite a long way even from there to bring it all down to here and allow us to now start getting a lot more of our um, iridium from core processing. As I was saying earlier, that is something we would really like to do. We'd like to get everything being provided from core, core processing to, to the, as much as we possibly can, because it will never run out. Uh, down here, however, this seems to have stopped. Oh, it's because we've got we've, we've jammed up on core, uh, core fragments, um, because presumably something down here has jammed up. Let's have a quick look at that. Yes, we've got too much water, apparently, of all things. Uh, we've got so much water in here that all, all the core processing is jammed up and we're no longer using cores. So if they hadn't already spent another I don't know how many hours playing this and have probably already come and fixed this, that would be something I could point out to them. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so Mark has expanded out and I believe he has either got or at least intended to get every single core seam on this planet. And knowing Mark, Mark tends to be quite thorough, so he's probably he probably has, in fact, got all of the core seams. Uh, I'm not going to go around and try and fact-check him on that one. The other thing that Mark's done links into what I was saying that Tristan's been up to, and he's massively expanded the uh, hydrogen chloride production because it just, it was it was insufficient before. It was it was always struggling to keep up. There were many many problems with it. So Mark's come in and he's he's, he's redesigned it completely from scratch and made it you know work. So we have all of this stone coming in as we've discussed before. That's being pulverized into sand, and then here all of that sand is being turned into hydrogen and chlorine, and then being turned back into hydrogen chloride to go off and be and be used as appropriate for the uh, for the iridium processing and i believe there's one of the stages is it yes this one here we go uses the hydrogen chloride to make the to make the powdered iridium so yeah we were getting through a crazy amount of it and so that 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 upgrade has now sorted that one out going further and further this was the slightly silly but mostly stone planet of andragon uh, where we're getting, well, lots and lots of things. We're getting a huge amount of stone. As you can see, it's pouring down the belt over here. 
And where is this actually going? Here we go. It's going into an Arcolink chest here. And this is teleporting it all back to... It'll be to Norvis or Norvis Orbit. I'm not really sure. It, but it sort of doesn't matter. We've got a lot of random stuff coming through here. And there's some, some prioritization been set up over here. So what's that looking for? It's looking for there being at least 100 stone in this chest here. That's interesting. So we're reckoning on the uh, the stone being the most important thing to get the, to be passed through. Which is fair. We do need a lot of stone to be transported through. And that is what this planet is all about and all for. But we obviously have a huge demand on stone at the other end. Look at the rate this is flowing in along here. Um, and all just pouring into this... I was going to say pouring into the um, into the Arcolink here. But it, there's, there's a bit of a weird tangle of belts going on. But, but we've got two pink, two purple belts flowing in here reasonably happily. Uh, or one and a half. It, it, it's going in anyway. We're getting a decent amount flowing in. But it's all being taken out at the other end just as fast as it's going in. And that's why this belt along here isn't flowing. I gather that we also had some problems with some of the uh, the core processing along here. Apparently we were backing up on the pyroflux because it's the last one in the in, in the line along here. So the barrels weren't making it all the way through from wherever barrels... Yeah, barrels are made up here. The barrels weren't making it all the way through down to the pyroflux. But that seems to be sorted now. Um, there are some cables running along here. So I guess we're telling these to only run when the, uh, when the pyroflux tank is fairly empty. Uh, I guess that is a way to fix it. To be honest, if there's a shortage of barrels, then there's a shortage of barrels. And I don't think putting in controls like this is really going to help. Um, except that apparently it has, which is a bit of a mystery. So um, maybe it's all about keeping them a little bit more balanced. I, yeah, I don't know. It's this, this is a little bit weird. Unless we're venting the other ones off. No, no, because these are pump, oh, just pumping in. I don't know. I'm, oh, you know, I take it back. There's oil being taken out over here, but that's being taken off. Oh, being turned to be turned into petroleum gas. So, but, but that's that's for making acid. Um, I can imagine it helping in the short term because if you turn off these ones and let these tanks fill up a bit while you're getting rid of the pyroflux backlog, I can see how that would open up, open that back up again, and allow the core processing to start working. But I don't understand why that wouldn't just mean something else fills up because if you're not making enough barrels, you're not making enough barrels. That said, that said. If you've, if you've managed to jam this system up, then you're not going to be getting any iron coming through, because the iron is coming from the uh, from the core, core processing up here, which is producing iron ore along with all the other stuff. So that's making the iron in, the, in these machines here, which are passing them up to be then made into steel, to be made into the barrels. So if you jam it up completely, then you'll stop getting iron. So, yeah, I guess that could be a, could be a cause of it. So maybe once it was given the, the right sort of poking, it just sort of settled down and decided to behave itself a bit. And I can credit all of that to Tristan. Tristan's the one who's been messing around on this planet. Now, the next note uh, also says Andragon, uh, but it's, it's talking about uh, cleaning up um, some module and belt upgrades that I was doing. So I think that's actually not Andragon. I think that must, that's meant to be Agnea, and Mark just put the wrong thing down here. And yes, over here, we've got now lots, lots more purple belts. All the modules have been upgraded. So I think that's probably what uh, Mark was talking about. And so now the system over here is, is working quite nicely. We've got, again, core chunks coming in, being processed. Yeah, But I don't think very much has happened over over here, apart from finishing off those belt upgrades, so there's not a great deal to say. Now I, I do imagine this, there's another Arcolink chest down here that's pulling everything through and, te and teleporting it back over to Norbit, that's great. What is it mildly interesting here, so this means of course that the train has stopped has stopped running because why would you need a train? Um, and so, and in fact it's, the train has been completely removed. We've kept the elevators in though because that's a, way to, a good way to get power down from orbit down to on the ground. And so if we look up in orbit we'll see that there's still still an enormous quantity of solar panels here that are, that are beaming the solar pa the power back down again. I say an enormous quantity, it's not that many because we're so close to the sun here that we don't really need a huge number of them. But that's the easiest way to bring the power down. But then we've got the meteor defense ammunition and the elevator cable being brought out over here and passed down to keep both of these running. So this area, I would say, has been completely upgraded and tidied up. Now there's a few funny little bits of Bit, little bits of funny business going on, like we've got the elevator and all, and the, and the uh, teleport chest down here, rather than sort of up a bit closer to production, because previously there was a big um, train system down here that that, need, that this is, was working with. Uh, but other than that, I think this has all been generally tidied up and moved into it moved into quite a sensible position. Um, and now that we don't have to worry about trains and spaceship loads at a time, we've got a slightly different prioritization system over here, that, which is watching how much vulcanite is in the chest here and then loading more of it in as as and when required. And the same with the enriched as well. And as always, we've got all the trash just flowing in all of the time because that's being got rid of at the other end and just thrown away as necessary. Oh, and we've got sulphur pouring out as well because you get through quite a bit of sulphur trying to make Vulcan. Over on Njord, there were some fairly simple issues. Uh, we ran out of plastic and ran out of 
cryonites, so the amount of those that's being requested has been increased. Although I suspect that might have happened before the uh, the Arco link was put in, because you know when you've got an Arco link, you shouldn't be running out of anything because the uh, the, the supply time is basically zero. It apply it arrives immediately. You don't have to wait for it. So that was probably done previously. But Tristan has also done some belt improvements to get more ore into the processing area. And the processing area is this large system down here, where, well, the top, top ones are bringing in the uh, core chunks occasionally, which are getting pulverized down and again, and then powder, yada yada yada, all the way through. And then down here, there's a slightly healthier flow of, I'm not quite sure why there's um, this stage of the Holmium processing coming in from over here. Oh, that's coming, right, that's coming from the water cleaning. So we're producing dirty Holmium water, and then that produces small amounts of, what is this, crushed Holmium? Uh, yeah, crushed holmonite, in, uh, so that needs to be fed back into the system somewhere. Also, we've got various mines uh, bring, digging up holmonite. We've got a station where it's being dropped off here by trains like this one. And so that all pulls down. This will be the belts that Tristan's been improving. There's a massive 8 to 8 balancer there. And then these all pour off to various processing facilities down here. And you'll notice that these ones don't have the first stage of crushing because they're not running off uh, the core chunks. They're running off the ore. So they can just work straight. They can just go straight into the second phase of crushing and pass it through and yada yada yada. And we end up with at least a little bit of holmium coming out at the end here. Uh, we'll call that about half a red belt, shall we? So that's, uh, But maybe that's enough at the moment. I mean, it, it is constantly flowing, uh, but maybe it's enough. Who knows? I guess we'll be checking into that a bit later on. Finally, moving out to Snowdrop, right in the far extremes of the solar system. Well, some big changes have happened here. So there used to be an enormous cryonite processing system around here, and that has been removed completely. There is now nothing in here for processing cryonite. All we're doing, well, okay, there's a, there's a mine here digging some of it up, and um, that will be fed through in the case, in cases of an abject emergency, which uh, we always we seem to be having little bits of. Uh, but mostly, this planet is now just pulling in. Uh, cryonite core chunks from various core seams around the planet. Now this one hasn't been done quite as thoroughly. There's still quite a lot of um, core seams out here that have yet to be tapped which is probably why we're still having to pull some of the cryonite through from the uh, from the mines down here. But the idea is that all of the cryonite core chunks are just being teleported off to Norvis where it all comes pouring out of the magic teleport chest over here and we can do the core processing uh, over here where we're making as usual making all of the trash. It's presumably just being thrown into a trash train. Uh, yes, down here. Uh, no, actually, no, it's being split out a bit. Oh, okay, we're putting the stone into this one and then the core chunk, vanilla core chunks into this one. And apparently a little bit into this one for some reason. Is that a mistake? It's a cryonite processing dump. Hmm. Um, I'm not quite sure. This, this this seems a little bit funny over here as well. We've got a complete yeah, we've got a completely full warehouse here. We've got a train limit set to uh, zero, so that makes me think this area is either not finished or just straight up not working. But anyway, going back to what's supposed to be happening over here, uh, we're we're turning all of the uh, the cryonite core chunks into actual cryonite rods over here. We're bringing in a certain amount of heavy oil in order to make that work, and then we can ship out all of the cryonite rods. So it's basically the same sort of system you would expect to see except it's being done over on Norvis because Magic Teleport Chest makes that easy, rather than over on Snowdrop as it has been before. I noticed we, all, we also seem to be bringing over um, the various types of uh, the, the, the cables and the Meteor Defense ammunition by bot to put into a chest and then send back through the Teleport Chest, uh, which I, I have to disapprove of a little bit because people would be disappointed in me if I didn't, but oh well, I've, I've stopped playing now so I can't complain too much. Maybe that's why we're getting so, so few UPS because so much stuff's been botted. Mm, that doesn't sound quite right to me either, so I don't know. <laughs> Another note is that back over here on Snowdrop, the uh, the power generation, we used to have beam power over here, but that has been removed. And now we have the traditional solar up in orbit. Because we've got to a point now where solar panels are cheap enough that we can put down 1,500 of them easily enough and uh, in order to power the system, especially as we've, we've removed all the processing systems. And so... It's not a big deal anymore to build out 1,500 uh, solar pa red solar panels to make it to make an array like this. Whereas back when we built we were building up this planet before, it wasn't really practical out here because as you can see, these are only generating 882 kilowatts each. If we compare them to the ones in Agnea orbit, those are producing 4.5 megawatts. That's more than five times more power. So you can see why previously we didn't really want to uh, solar power snowdrop, but now once we've, now we've got a much higher production rate of these sort of things, and they, they feel much cheaper, we're not too worried about it. 
And so there we go, that's covered all of the ore digging, digging up the ores and doing the, sort of the basic processing of them into sort of metals and equivalent things that they've been getting up to. I thought a sensible way to do this would be to start at the beginning with, with producing the, the various types of metals, exotic or mundane, and looking at how they're getting all getting passed over to, to a Norvis and then tele teleported over there nicely as you'd, as you'd hope. And so if we go back over to Norvis, we can now start looking at some of the things that have been changed in the sort of removed and tidied up a bit in the in the logistics area. So you might remember that we used to have a rocket silo here uh, that was launching the rockets up to uh, to Norbit to take to take up all of the supplies way back in the dark ages of about I don't know series two, maybe even series three. Uh, and so. Mark has been doing a bit of tidying up around here, so he's got rid of the silo, he's tidied up all the gubbins around it and all the all the things that were feeding it off the main bus down here. So we've got a few sort of somewhat superfluous belts like this one that's no longer doing anything. There may be some other belts along here that aren't needed because their stuff isn't needed any further down. I don't know. He's left the, uh, the note that says fly better just in case we need reminding. But basically there's been a huge amount of tidying up done over here and uh, to, to make things a bit... I don't know, a bit, a bit neater, a bit tidier, and maybe let the game run a little bit quicker. Also, we used to have a huge rocket park down here where we were launching rockets to go off to all of the different exoplanets. That we've not needed for a very long time either, but we'd never bothered to tidy it up. But Mark has been going in and tidying up some of these things and just making things a bit nicer, a bit neater, and, 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 and so on. And just, just, you know, tidying stuff up a bit. He says he's also done some bus cleanup, so that's, I think, probably, it's probably the sort of thing I've been talking about with that, with that rocket launch silo that was in here, and there's maybe been some other bits and pieces along here that we don't need anymore, that we don't use. I did notice that the uh, the, the liquid rocket fuel refinery over here is, is still here, so we're still dropping off solid rocket fuel, we're still turning it into liquid rocket fuel, but we're just putting it in some tanks now, we're not actually doing anything with it. This this pipe, I don't believe, goes, and actually this pipe goes somewhere, comes down here, and then flows along here, and gets to over here somewhere, where it goes down into... Oh, no, there's no, there's no, there's no rocket park down there anymore. So that's not doing anything. And the other part of it was where are we? Over here. There's another part that goes off this way, and that comes to a dead end as well. So there's, there's a few, there's a few bits and pieces up here that we're just not using anymore. But when we're mostly not using rocket fuel for, well, for much. Um, it looks like we're powering a train with it over here for some reason. But in general, not really using the, not really using the rocket fuel. Mark has also been removing various old old ships and uh, docking and, and landing platforms that aren't needed anymore. So the, the, we can see the one from Agnea is gone, Kothar is gone, Snowdrop has has gone, and as uh, said, that's now being produced on Norvis. So this is presumably a train bringing it up to here and unloading it in order for it to be passed out to other um, other, other planets that need it. Njord has gone, although this well, it hasn't been fully tidied up, but the uh, the spaceship landing area is gone. We've just got still got some warehouses in there that could do with perhaps maybe a little bit of tidying. Big Rid's gone. Taras, there still seems to be a spaceship here, so maybe that one hasn't been done yet. Talos, there's still a gap for a spaceship. Oliran, it's still a spaceship. Stardust, that's got long gone. Andrigan, uh, nope. Andrigan, Talos North. Uh, sorry, Talos Naquium, even. Those still seem to be there. Fenestra, we're not really using Fenestra anymore. Asteroid 2, I think that was where we were getting the methane ice from. And then, oh yes, this is, this is, ah, this is the new one for Talos. So the Talos one, it's... <laughs> Technically, it's, it's sort of still here. There's still a gap over here, yes, but it's been uh, superseded by the uh, by the supplied by the area over here, where we've got all of these things being brought in for Naquium processing and various other things. And it's all just being and uh, it all, it's all just being fed into the same same teleport chest now, because the Arca links are so expensive that you pretty much want to have everything running through the same one if you possibly can. There's there's no point in trying to save on belts and and, and effort logistical effort at the other end by having an extra couple of uh, of Arca link storages. So here you can see we've got. So many different things being fed in, and this is all of the inputs required for mo for both the beryllium and the naquium. And so, then, so you can see up here, we've got beryllium coming out, we've got naquium coming out, and the crystals would come out as well if we needed them. And also a, a nice, healthy supply of junk as well to be going into the in, into the junk station over here and taking it away. Similarly, Mark has been removing the spaceports from the other end of all of these as well. So this is Kothar as an example, but you can see that all the rail has been removed. There's no longer anywhere for a spaceship to dock here. He's been doing a lot of going around and tidying things up and, uh, and just generally sorting sorting things out, which is something we didn't really do enough of while we were playing. Uh, I guess there, were, there was always another crisis to stumble onto, and so we never really had time for tidying up and sorting things out and trying to regain some sanity. Njord Orbit hasn't had quite the same level of tidying up. I believe the spaceship is no longer flying, however it's not had the entire spaceport removed. In fact, if we have a look at the map, we can see that there's an Andrigan spaceship just parked there near Andrigan, but in general, there's an Oliran spaceship there that's... Oh, that one's actually still moving, okay. So there are still 
there's still a couple of spaceships knocking around. There's one there called Nyssa. I don't know what that one's for. Uh, but in general, you'll, you, if you remember what this was like when we were actually playing it, there were fleets and fleets of spaceships flying around here. And now there's there seems to be one on the move and another one that's waiting to park somewhere. So, yeah, we've made an enormous... Pro I say we. They have made enormous progress in reducing the number of uh, spaceships we have going around. And that should be very, very good for our UPS, based on what I understand of how, how bad spaceships are for it. But the fact is... We're still only running at 23 UPS, so uh, yeah, maybe I need a new computer or something. On a similar note, way out in Stardust, this is a long, long way from home. This is one of our uh, Naquitite uh, supply areas. Uh, well, there's been more upgrades going on here as well. So again, a, a teleport chest, a removal of the spaceship. This is all Mark's. Again, this, this is Mark's doing. Uh, we've got uh, sulfur coming in over here as required, uh, being dribbled out over here relatively slowly. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure why that's being controlled like this, but um, it is. So uh, as not reason why. I guess it's probably to stop massive quantities of sulfur flowing through to fill up the uh, so we can make massive massive quantities of sulfuric acid and just, f and just fill up all of these tanks because that would be rather a lot of demand so I guess instead we're just trying to keep this at a, a sort of a sensible medium quantity and dribble the sulfur through at a rate that will allow it to be kept kept happy but not but not absolutely full because that would take a crazy crazy amount of sulfur through and presumably the other end of this I would imagine is over on Talos and there isn't a huge amount of sulfur there so if we did have this running solidly it would just be a huge sulfur sink on the rest of the factory um, it would sort itself out after not too long but it would get through a lot of sulfur Mark has also removed the uh, Naquitite crushing that was previously on Stardust. So there was a chunk, there was a chunk of it around here, and there's a chunk of it up here on on this asteroid as well. So now it's just belts bringing the Naquitite straight through and sending it through the teleport chest. And this means all of the crushing of that Naquitite can now be done down here on on Talos itself. Um, and this is, this is the system that I was setting up a, a while back, back when we were actually playing. And as far as I can tell, it seems to be basically as as it was when I was when I was when I built it up. Uh, it looks like this, this block over here isn't actually in use at the moment, but yeah, never mind. Um, we do seem to have enough coming through, as you can tell by the fact that most of these belts aren't running... In fact, none of these belts are running absolutely solidly. So, it's, it, yeah, it's, the system is ticking over quite happily here. We've got a steady stream of uh, crushed Naquitite coming through here. Hopefully, that's enough to keep everything happy, although it doesn't seem to be. This chest down here is, um, is basically empty, and so I suspect if we follow this down into the Naquium processing areas over here, yeah, this belt coming in is not as healthy as I would have liked it to be. Um, I think we need we need more Naquium to be coming through, or more, more Naquitites to be coming through and being processed. The system was specced for having uh, quite a lot coming in via this teleport chest here when I first put it in, pulling the uh, Naquitite over from Melancholia, but also expecting quite a lot of Naquitites to be coming in by spaceship and train and being dropped off over here to be to, uh, from from Stardust. And so now that we're only now that we only have this coming in, the uh, the pulverizing system over here is no longer fast enough. Could do with some upgrades, I think. Now, a possibility would be to upgrade this to tier 6 modules. For, actually, no, it's on tier 6 modules. Mm. Maybe tier 6 speed modules as well, because there does seem to be a bit of a... It's running a bit slowly up here. Why are you not running? Oh, you've too, got too much water. So, interestingly, uh, we currently can't... We're not making the Naquium as fast as we would like to, because we've got too much water. Now, over here, we're telling this to run if the tank has more than 20,000 in it. So, we are boiling this water off as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, but it's just one one um, blow off valve here is, is is insufficient. Even though actually we've got another one here that's running flat out. Yeah, we just need a lot more flare stacks along here to get rid of all of this excess water that's trying to come out. And that will that will then speed this up quite a bit. And maybe we'll have enough. I'm a bit sceptical though because we do still only have one belt of uh, crushed naquitite coming down here. Although there's potential actually there's potential for a second one here. What is that? What you are? Yes, this is also crushed naquitite here. So if we can get this much, all of the, if we can get the system up and running a bit more enthusiastically, then we could get two belts in, two belts out. So maybe it would actually be okay. Um, but there's, at the moment, there's there's too much water, and that is causing problems. Next up, back to Norbit. And over here, Mark would like it to be known that he has switched over to having separate trains for all of the Vita products. So you can see here, we've got the everything being brought in from Big Red to here, put onto these belts, and these are all deep space belts, so they're nice and quick. Then it's brought up from there to all of the stations over here, and we've now got separate trains for each one of those products. And I think that's a very good thing, because I do remember having having problems with, uh, with getting all the Vita products brought through in sufficiently large quantities. Now, I think having the, uh, the teleport chest in there is going to make an enormous difference, because now we don't have the latency to worry about with the spaceship and turning up with li sort of limited amounts of things. And by the looks of it, yes, we do seem it see, does seem to be okay because we now have enough of absolutely everything. All of these belts are steady. The trains are all parked here. 
things seem to be pretty good. Mark has also set up a new secondary elevator based uh, bulk transport system for bringing things up from uh, Norvis to Norbit. The things that need to be brought up in huge quantities like sulphur and iridium girders and apparently coal and lithium and bearings and, uh, and, and rare metals. And there's potential for many many different things in here. So oh, here we go, the coal train is now departing. So it was waiting in a Norvis secondary, uh, secondary, so Norvis secondary being this one, the buffer station at the top of it. And now it's heading over to now it's heading over to probably the biological area, I guess. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's heading over to the biological area, which now requires coal, and because it's bring and it's bringing over a full train load, and this gets round basically gets around the, the problem with the old system we had where there, there was a limited amount of throughput from ground to space. So this was the, uh, the we, uh, we've argued about, I've argued with Mike many times about this system over here, but he had a train that would bring up uh, a mixture of various different things and then unload them here where they'd be sorted and put into the various different stations for all these various different things. Um, he preferred this system over the, uh, over the um, sushi trains that Tristan and I had bringing up all kinds of miscellaneous stuff like this um, for reasons that I don't, I don't entirely agree with or rather I don't think it exactly makes sense. Uh, but as I say, we've had that argument many, many times and I don't think I'm going to be able to convince him that he's wrong. So I, I, I won't try again. Uh, however, both this system and this system both have serious throughput limitations because you've got one train trying to bring up everything. And that's not realistic because the, the, the train just isn't big enough and it spends, it spends all its time running back and forwards, never having everything you actually need for it. And so Mark's new system gets around that but uh, quite, quite straight, in a quite simple straightforward way by having a train bring up an entire train load of whatever it is that's needed. And then as soon as that's needed somewhere, it trundles off, drops it off there, goes back down to pick up some more and then comes back up to wait here again. So this, this will get past all of those sort of bandwidth issues we're having with trying to bring all the resources up in, in decent quantities. In order to make that work, the secondary elevator needs a lot more train passover or pass-through systems. So you can see along here we've got ground trains bringing over lots and lots of resources, whether it's sulphur or uh, fertilizer or coal, etc., etc., etc. All of these things. Then they're passed straight over to these stations where they can be loaded into space trains, which can then go up there, there like this like this fertilizer train is at the moment, go straight up into space, where they could then, in theory, at least go in and park in the stations up here before disappearing off to wherever they're at, wherever that is required. So the fertilizer train is already on its way over to drop that fertilizer off because we apparently need enormous quantities of fertilizer. But that is a huge expansion over what we had before. Previously we had a sm smaller version of this. So we had a train with a stacking area up here that were picking up or dropping off various different resources here that would then be passed over to uh, st trains over here that could then take them up, up the elevator. Um, it looks like we've still got drop-off being done over here. So stuff that's being brought down from space to the ground is being passed over to here and stuff that's being taken up into orbit is being done down here. So it separates the two off, which is quite nice. This has required some extra rail, of course, so we've got this, this bit down here. And Tristan says he's put in some route discouragement stations to try and prevent trains that are coming to here from going through the centre of the, the main factory. And I think that's done, been done partly by having the entrance like that, as, as only coming in from that side. You'll notice there isn't a loop, a curve like that. But it's apparently not been enough, so Tristan's put some um, route discouragement stations in somewhere. I I don't, I don't know where they are. It's, it's very hard to spot these things. Um, but somewhere in here, there'll be... There'll be some stations that the trains would have to go through in order to get down there that are there to discourage them, to try and encourage the trains to instead come round to the bottom here, go all the way around here, and then come up here to go into the station from the bottom. Um, because a lot of them are going to be coming from the uh, core processing area here, because they're going to have they're going to have various resources, but also a lot of them are going to be coming from over here, because this is where we're making all of the exotic metals into other things. So things like the iridium bearings and, and heavy composites and girders and so on are going to be coming from over here. And so we want them to definitely come round this bottom bypassed round around the bottom here and be brought in there rather than trying to barge their way through the uh, through the centre of the factory, which tended to be a little bit congested. Now we, we had a few train jams here and there, but basically it's been it's been mostly okay, but we don't really want to um, exacerbate it any more than we have to. <laughs> Roll on uh, Factorio 2 and, and the train bridges, that's all I can say. Right, I have been going on for a while now, so I think this is probably a good time to uh, to, put, to stop the video. Um, so I've been talking about uh, moving resources around, out of the ground, and to where it needs to be done. Next time I'll talk a bit about how we've been getting on with science and research, and where the uh, where, where the, uh, the the tricky bits have been, have been coming from around there, and some of the mistakes that have been fixed, some of the uh, 
other things that have needed dealing with and um, other things that have needed a bit of expansion as well. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, streams will continue on Mondays and Wednesdays as, as you're hopefully used to, although I am away for a week at the end of October. So um, there, may, there will be no streams that week. And of course, as soon as Factorio 2 comes out, I will be playing an enormous quantity of that. So uh, I hope you're looking forward to coming along and seeing me play that. Thank you very much for watching. And there'll be another video next Friday, hopefully. So uh, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.